Yes, I understand that Xing Chiu and Chong Yun are very different people and they each deserve separate videos, but unfortunately for them, I'm kind of busy and tired right now, so there's that. However, I'm also not lumping them together for no reason because they are a cute ship and their personalities and motivations do have some overlapping themes combined with the fact that I'm now treating both of them as Kaya's trainees or I guess lackeys. They also both have very charming personalities that bring out your auntie instincts making you want to give them red envelopes on New Year's Eve. Both of them have been quite useful to me and have also grown on me in different ways. I got Chong Yun as my first character from the standard banner because Noelle and Ning Guang were from beginner's banner and Yan Fei was from Ayaka banner. At first I didn't understand the value of having two cryo members in one team because I didn't think Freeze actually hurt the opponent enough, but I found his character details and voice lines to be quite comedic because of the woes of possessing excessive yang energy. Xing Chiu, on the other hand, was someone I took to right away because he seemed adorable and he was really eccentric in his story quest. And if you haven't realized yet, I have a thing for the weirdos. So when I got him, I didn't know how to use him at all, but I still farmed so many ley lines just to level him up because he was so squishy cute and he turned out to improve my gameplay a lot because he became my go-to healer. Yeah, I know that sounds weird, but whatever. Don't worry, he doesn't have a healing bone circlet or whatever, but I always bring him everywhere because ever since I've had him, I've been very particular about my characters being at 100% HP, no less. Now, going back to Chongyun, at some point I found out about the power of the freeze reaction and that was the start of his career as Kaya's sidekick and I'd mainly credit him for transforming my Kaya into a DPS because without Chong Yun's infusion, I would have probably left his NA at level 2 or something. Still, he was capped at level 80 for quite a while, until I realized how much I've been using him in combat challenges, so I realized he definitely deserves to be part of my elite level 90 circle, which was good because just very very recently, he got himself a wolf's gravestone, and I swear I will never allow anyone to rip it from his grasp. If Diluc decides to come one day, he'd better wait for his own copy. Oh, and both of them are single crowned on their way to being double crowned, but I accidentally crowned Chong Yun's E instead of his Q, so that's um, make sure not to commit the same mistake I did. Anyway, the point is I love these two kids so much, and I believe them to be Li Yue's favorite nephews, so please allow me to brag about them like the proud aunt that I am. For both Xin Qiu and Chong Yun, youthfulness is an important part of their characterization because it impacts their motivations and interests. They're starting to form strong beliefs as well as establish and navigate their sense of self as they try to participate in society in ways that are likely new to them. They may be quite mature for their age because of their developed ethical code and their sense of social responsibility, yet they are still quite carefree and live in their own worlds not worrying too much about adult social concerns, and they are both still awkward in a lot of aspects of their lives. Compared to the other teenagers in the game, I think Xing Chiu and Chong Yun cater more to teen audiences who are high achieving and disciplined while also still trying to find ways to have fun. A key characteristic of both of these characters is their brimming passion and fixation on their interests and ambitions, almost to the point of grandiosity. Not to say that they imagine themselves as more heroic than they actually are because they're not exactly the delusional type, but at their young age they expect themselves to carry out heroic duties because of the high value they place on that sort of thing. Xing Chiu glorifies chivalric stories, especially in martial arts novels, while Chong Yun glorifies the power of his family's exorcism arts, and they aspire to emulate these magnificent feats despite their young age. The reason why I believe that this ties into their youth is because I feel like young people are so overly enthusiastic about these kinds of things 
while adults tend to mellow down, especially as they are able to find actual outlets for their ambitions instead of only hoping to strive for them. However, that doesn't at all mean that it's pointless for them to act in accordance with their grand ambitions because this has resulted in their individual personal development, with Chong Yun diligently training in thaumaturgy and emotion regulation, and with Xin Qiu writing books and attempting to find solutions to the life struggles of the people he comes across, like Chang the Ninth. Even though Chong Yun still isn't able to exercise demons, he has offered his services to others by helping drive away spirits from their homes just by sitting down. Although this unorthodox method of exorcism may seem disappointing and unimpressive to some, it still allows the affected household to feel relief from having the demon driven away, thus creating a positive impact on society. As for Xing Qiu, the books he writes may be unacceptable to Liyue readers, but they were able to gain popularity in Inazuma and spread joy to many avid readers, including the Sangonomiya Kokomi herself. Their desire to contribute meaningfully to society has also led them to apprehend some suspects in the 2022 Lantern Right storyline. For a moment, you see them behave almost like adults, with Xing Qiu expressing his righteous anger with a very firm tone, and with Chong Yun being the one to remain calm and point out important observations on the incident, showing the fruits of the effort they put into their own character development. In some ways, this passion makes them favorable to adults because they can envision the future of Liyue in these two kids. However, it's also important to note that their budding uniqueness can prove to be a burden because adults tend to be judgmental of kids who are too fixated on certain things or don't fully behave as they are expected to. Perhaps their family members are confused about where they go adventuring and are disappointed when they engage in things that could be deemed as frivolous like perhaps indulging too much in their imagination. Still, this sort of defiance is important as it helps strengthen their character and it's a sign of their strong beliefs which are integral to their sense of personal and social responsibility. Even a quiet sort of rebellion can be valuable, the type where you don't openly oppose the adults around you but you continue to believe in things that they may want you to give up on. I think this is more of an issue for Xing Qiu because his parents don't know much about his writing and in the Irodori festival, he had to make up the excuse that he was going there to oversee the Theater Mechanicus event. He doesn't openly rebel by saying he wants to write professionally, but he finds ways to still consume and write martial arts novels behind their backs and he's quite content with that. With Chong Yun, the issue doesn't seem very evident because his parents don't seem to disapprove of what he's doing, but I think there's a possibility that he could be training more than what they would want him to, and some uncles and aunties might secretly look down on him for his inability to properly execute thaumaturgy. However, in his case, he asserts himself by not giving up on the practice of thaumaturgy, even if some people might think he's unworthy of doing so. I'm really glad that these two young men have each other because even though they sometimes make fun of or roll their eyes at each other's weird antics, they are able to find solidarity in their passion and ambitions. Aside from having a shared interest in martial arts, I believe that they are bonded by their keen understanding of the values which the other possesses. They both value excellence, so they support each other's efforts to become more and more proficient in their own fields of interest and they both value justice and righteousness a lot as well. Their friendship has become so important to them that they're willing to get dragged into each other's pursuits even if it might be burdensome for themselves, like when Chong Yun endures Xing Qiu's pranks and when Xing Qiu endures Chong Yun's sensitive palate and post-spicy food consumption outbursts. Having this sort of friendship where their wavelengths match is very valuable because it allows them to find company in their weirdness and also gain a sense of validation that they're doing well in how they're navigating their identities. What's quite enduring about these two nephews of Liyue is that they both have lots of weird quirks and epic fails incorporated into their character arcs. Chong Yun has this whole 
running gag of being too hot-headed and suffering from success by driving away spirits before he can properly vanquish them. And Xing Chiu has his awful handwriting. I would say that Chong Yun deals with these shortcomings more compared to Xing Chiu, but since he's also more used to it, he probably developed better coping strategies. Xing Chiu, on the other hand, isn't always used to encountering problems like that, so he struggles with owning up to his weaknesses, as evidenced by his storyline in the Irodori Festival, where he tried to sign the book secretly in advance. I love that these two aspirational teenagers are very much still affected by these awkward yet adorable shortcomings because it really speaks to the teenage experience where we're constantly having to deal with embarrassing incidents as we stumble our way into adulthood. However, witnessing these struggles manifest in characters makes me realize that these weaknesses can come across as endearing and motivate us to root for their victory. I think this might be part of the reason why Chong Yun and Xing Chiu even have their visions to begin with, because their determination in the midst of their social clumsiness is worth recognizing. But at the same time, I wish these darling kids would realize that while they tend to improve themselves going forward, I hope they don't necessarily view it as having to correct themselves, if that makes sense. Especially when it comes to Chong Yun, Overcoming his excessive young energy is very important, but also accepting it and wielding it properly is also something that can greatly improve his sense of self-worth. I think he's able to do that in a sense because he allows himself to use his young energy for good, driving away spirits from houses, instead of refusing to help because he's self-conscious about the methods he's using. Xin Chiu, I think, is also able to strike a balance between improvement and acceptance with how he was able to publish his books in Inazuma using his unique writing style instead of simply overhauling it to fit the taste of Liyue readers. Although I think he still does receive feedback from his editors at Yae Publishing House. I feel like the awkward aspects of their personalities are not only very very cute and funny, but are also indicators of their uniqueness, which is one of their greatest strengths. And I hope that as they continue to grow up, they won't exactly get rid of these bits of awkwardness, but rather be able to master it more, if that makes sense. While I appreciate the adult characters in Genshin for their maturity and their developed thinking, What's interesting about the younger characters is that we can still sort of imagine how they might change as they grow up. I do think it's already quite impressive that they possess visions at such a young age, and it's nice to imagine how their relationship with their powers might also change as they gain more life experiences. I believe that all vision wielders are weirdos to varying extents, because you probably gotta be quite the character to get any of the higher powers to notice you, right? So I don't think that becoming less weird is part of the natural trajectory of the evolution arc of these young boys. It's possible that they'll become weird in a more subtle way, or perhaps also weird in the exact same way but commanding more respect. I don't think it matters if Chong Yun will finally be able to exercise a demon properly with thaumaturgy, or if Xing Chiu ends up writing more full-time or getting into other genres of literature. Regardless of what changes may occur in their lifestyles, especially with how they choose to work or spend their time, I think we can expect an improvement in their attitude. Of course, they're quite amazing as it is already, but I'm imagining that they'll become more confident in themselves, they'll learn more social cues, they'll have more insights about the world, and they might also have more refined sensibilities. And they'll also be more intimidating especially to any wrongdoers they might come across. Imagine the lantern right scene, but like times 10 with how scary they'll be. Basically similar to how they are today, but with more maturity and self-assurance. And also, I do think I can imagine them still being joined at the hip as much as possible, because a relationship like this would be too valuable to give up anytime soon. So yes, I love my little nephews very much, and I hope that they'll continue to flourish in my account as well as in the storyline. I would love to see more of them, 
and I also do hope to take some inspiration from them even though I'm likely older than them. I will continue giving them as many red envelopes as they please, well metaphorically that is, and I hope that they may also inspire some teenage gamers to discover the best in themselves. Of course, that would require touching grass, but it's not impossible. I mean, some of my friends and I are officers in our college orgs, so it's doable. To all the Xingqiu's and Chongyuns in the world aspiring for greatness, you've got this. That's all for today and thanks for watching. Why not check out my other content and stay tuned for more? Let me hear your thoughts down in the comments below.